The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the producers and the individuals appearing on this program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the staff of the Sun Prairie Media Center, its members or underwriters, the board members of the Media Center Commission, Charter Communications, TDS Telecom, or the staff and elected officials of the City of Sun Prairie. Welcome to Real Reviews. My name is Jameson Rabbit. The man seated next to me is the reason Tom Selleck shaved his mustache. His name is Mike Roth. Mm -hmm. He, well, I was, we were good friends, and uh -huh. I was uh, telling him he doesn't do anything for the community, so he shaved it and donated it to uh, um, uh, that Carrot and Locks thing. Locks for Love? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and not Wait. a lot of people know about Are it. Are you saying he donated the the mustache itself or the proceeds from shaving the mustache? N no, he, the mustache itself. I love it. So there was a little child out there that with a cute little... Maybe fill in a <laughs> unibrow. <laughs> <laughs> Always wanted a unibrow. Uh, that's ex that actually, it's probably pretty terrible of me to say something like that. About nah, it's yeah. fine. Uh, oh, well. Totally fine. Well, we're going to go Not the it. worst thing we're going to say no. today. I no. guarantee it. Uh, people don't mention Tom Selleck as much as they should. They really should. Mm -hmm. He's that Ameri American legend. Yep. Uh, so this week we have a streaming spotlight for you as well as a few other films that we saw. And I'm going to get us started with this week's streaming spotlight. Mm -hmm. It is found on Netflix. It is a film called Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile from director Joe Berlinger, uh, who, who is known for a lot of these true crime type films mm -hmm. um, especially documentaries like he he did uh, the Paradise Lost series of films uh, he also did a film that was on Netflix earlier this year called Conversations with a Killer the Ted Bundy tapes hmm. which got people real excited it was a four part series all about Ted Bundy okay kind of got this movie sold then at, at uh, Sundance hmm. and uh, it's it's the narrative version of the Ted Bundy story where you have Zac Efron playing Ted Bundy Mm -hmm. um, you also have Lily Collins as Elizabeth Kendall. And the movie is actually kind of her story more than the Ted Bundy story. I hear it's based on her book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of course, I did not read that. Oh, you didn't do all the research. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of the story of Ted Bundy and the dual life that he led as just a regular old guy. Um, and it's uh, the, this, you know, title, uh, which is a mouthful, is titled such from a quote from the judge who was sentencing him. That was his opinion of Mr. Bundy. Um, and the movie really just kind of showcases how his charm and charisma and intelligence allowed him to literally get away with murder for a long time. Yeah. And people were willing to just kind of believe that there's no way it could be him because look at him. He's an all-American guy. He's, a, he's everyone's, you know, he, he could be a, your lawyer. He could be your, your big date, your daughter. Who mm -hmm. knows? And, uh, and he's really a monster. Yeah. It was weird um, how... He was portrayed because in this movie everybody knows he's the killer, but because of the way he acted and he was a convincing person, and they didn't make it look like he was a murderer trying to be a convincing person. Yeah, he was a convincing person. So if I didn't know the results of this movie, I might have believed the sh and that's hype the thing with is, it. it. I thought it was a really odd choice to treat Bundy as though he were just a normal guy, almost like that he weren't a savage killer. Yeah, and act like the jury was still out on whether his on his guilt or innocence. Mm -hmm. That was kind of how they treat him. Like I don't know, some people say he did these things. Like no. Uh, but Everyone I, said he did. <laughs> I thought that was really clever because that was the feeling of the time. Did he do it? We don't know. Um, there's a lot of overwhelming evidence, mm -hmm. but that wasn't known until it was came out in the courts, which I also learned something new. Um, this is the first televised uh, serial killing. Um, the trial? Yeah, the, the oh, trial. The actual, yeah, the, yeah the, and I remember when he got zapped. And I don't remember ever seeing a televised serial killer trial yeah, I don't know. after that um interesting cast in this movie too we open up yeah. right away we have james hetfield playing the uh, sheriff mm -hmm. which then i I'd be like well that seems random but then i realized joe berlinger also did uh some kind of monster the uh, metallica documentary when they were looking for a new bassist okay um and so he has connections he's done a lot of metallica things okay so i was like oh that's james hetfield 
<laughs> acting. You also have uh, Jim Parsons, Sheldon from Big Bang Theory, yep, as that the was, prosecutor. That threw me and out. John Malkovich yeah. as the judge. That also, and, and also Zac Afron as um, our killer. Yeah. That one is also kind of surprised, and I liked it. Everything seemed to work. I had a lot of moments where I'm like, oh, I know that guy. Yeah. Why is he in here? He's only here for like a couple minutes, and then he's gone. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really liked Zac Efron in this role. I thought yeah. he really personified Ted Bundy, and he kind of, because he is that guy. He's just always so good looking, and he's smart and charming, and uh -huh. I thought he did really well. I think a lot of this movie, for me, kind of struggled to find its tone. Like, there was okay. large stretches where I thought that it, it rode on the performance over the content of the film, mm -hmm. where if Zac Efron wasn't really convincing or if uh, um, Lily Collins wasn't really in convincing, uh -huh. the movie really would have been rough because I thought yeah. that it was, it was having a hard time understanding its subject matter in parts. Um, one of the things I didn't like about the movie, and it, I do this with everything that says it's a true um, movie based on real facts, this is how it is. Mm -hmm. um, in real life, um, the wife always knew that he was a killer. In this movie, they portrayed it where she was always not sure. She wasn't sure until it actually went through. But um, like the movie eventually tells us, she is the one who originally told the cops. Right. She's the People first one that called and told them, like, I think he's doing some things. Yeah, if they're like 50-50 on his way out of it. Yeah. Uh, and I guess in the book, it sounded like she always knew where in this one I think she loved him and she had conflicting I emotions think she but knew but didn't want to admit that she knew everything that she knew mm. um, and she did call the cops at one point now there was so I mentioned that uh, there was this documentary series that came out on Netflix earlier this year yeah oh yeah uh, from the same director and one of my big issues with this movie is um, that this seemed really repetitive that I didn't learn anything new because okay. I'd watched this documentary series, which was four parts. It was really the listening to the tapes. We're watching Ted Bundy being interviewed. All these things, really investigative. Um, and then this felt like a very shortcut version of it uh -huh. and the narrative, you know, Hollywood version of it. And so part of me was like, it's weird that you would give me, like, everything and then a couple months later you kind of give me a watered-down version of the same story. Did you uh, see the after credit? Um, stuff that they no I did not you, I, it's not usual for Netflix to yeah. do this and I just had it running Normally, as soon as the credits hit Netflix Ex is trying to send you to the next thing exactly this had post credits of the real scenes uh. Uh, that was uh, where they had uh, scenes from the movie was actually documented by real film mm -hmm. way back during the time and I thought it was a uh, pretty cool watching the actors portray um, yeah. what well, I thought the courtroom yeah. scenes especially because we saw all of those in the documentary. Uh -huh. They showed all of those courtroom scenes because it was all filmed, obviously. And so yeah. I thought that they those really mirrored each other really well. Hmm. But uh, Ultimately, what did you give Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Violent? I gave it a 3.5. Um, I think that's pretty fair. I, I really enjoyed it, but uh, I don't think it's going to win anything. And I'll probably yeah. forget about this in, in time. Yeah, it was a really hot property when it went to Sundance, uh, basically on the strength of Zac Efron being in it. And I'm like, that's an odd choice for him. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, I kind of felt like it was stumbling around for parts of it. And like I said, it was repetitive from the film that the same filmmaker made <laughs> earlier yeah. this year. I gave it, I think, two and a half. Is that? Yeah, oh. two and a half, right down the middle. Okay. I don't think it was, I think that it was, like, to borrow from you, I mean, it's going to be forgettable in the future. Yeah, I, I did enjoy myself. Sure. I just, uh, yeah. yeah. So I'm not going to... Uh, yeah, that's fair. That's right. fair. Yeah. A movie that you will, I will forget. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> and the title doesn't help. No, it doesn't. I cannot <laughs> remember this title. All right, <laughs> let's get into what was on the marquee this week. The first film I have is a film called Ugly Dolls. It is uh, from director Kelly Asbury, uh, a filmmaker who has made such luminary films as Smurfs Lost Village, Shrek 2, <laughs> Nomeo and Juliet. Um, and Ugly Dolls uh, are these dolls which are rejected at the factory. Uh, they are not normal dolls. They've been rejected by a factory, by most other people. They're sent to live in Uglyville. And uh, they all, all, these, all these dolls dream of being loved by a real human child. That's all they want. The cast is almost entirely made up of singers. Uh, Kelly Clarkson is the lead voice. You have Nick Jonas, Janelle Monet, Pitbull, Ice-T, Blake Shelton. This is your cast. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of, lot of music. It opens up with musicals. There's a lot of music throughout here. Um, they, the, these, these 
ugly dolls can't be whole until they've been loved by a human child and they're, they're searching for acceptance. Um, one of the weird things about this movie is they live in Uglyville and they claim to love it. There's an opening song about how much they love Uglyville. And then the next thing is, I can't wait to get out of Ugglyville <laughs> because I need to be accepted. <laughs> a mixed message. Um, there's some decent songs in here. Uh, Janelle Monae's character I thought was really great. She has a, a great song about uh, this makeover montage. Um, Pitbull is actually kind of fun in here. Um, and it's weird because these uglies are trying to make it to this town, the next town called Perfection, where the good dolls are trained by humans and they're getting prepared to be loved by humans. And uh, but the whole story is really convoluted and kind of boring. Um, felt like an overly long TV episode. Mm -hmm. It felt like they were desperately trying to recapture the magic of trolls. That's what I and was. And it was yeah. not there. Uh, watching the trailers, that's what I was thinking. They were trying to replicate mm -hmm. and. They failed to show me a trailer that made me feel like this was going to be magical or whimsical yeah. or had a good plot. Yeah. Um, Trolls, I will fight for that one tooth and sure. nail. I thought that was a great film. Yeah. This one did not trip my trigger, I did, so I didn't bother. No, and, and you're <laughs> fine. And I actually took my six-year-old daughter, and I'm not sure. My problem is I don't know who the audience is for this. Oh, no. There's nothing there for adults uh -huh. like you would find in some of these movies. Even Trolls has a thing for adults. Yeah. You know? Um, and my six-year-old daughter was kind of, she, the review of every movie that I take her to is, I love that it's my favorite movie. Uh-huh. Ugly Dolls, what did you think of it? It was okay. Oh. That's, that's not that's, good. That's not a glowing and review at all. Spoiler alert, I dozed off for a minute in this movie. <sighs> it was hard to stick with because there was just nothing there. It just, none of it mattered. Hmm. So, I, I don't know. I mean, I, it, I can't be, like, I can't pound away at it because it wasn't, like, actively terrible. Uh -huh. But it was actively boring. And that's that's pretty that's definitely troubling for a kids movie. Yeah, that's not good. I mean, it's boring for me, but it was boring for a six year old, and that's 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 really rough. So ultimately, I gave Ugly Dolls two out of five stars. Yeah. Uh, it says two and a half, but I mean two. <laughs> <laughs> really, the more I see two point five, I, I just wanted a one point yeah. five now. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Ugly Dolls, you don't need to bother with it. Just go watch Trolls again. All right. That holds up. That's a good. One. That's good music too. Yeah, it is. All right, what Fantastic. do you have for us on the marquee, sir? Um, I have. The Intruder, <laughs> directed by Dion Taylor. We have uh, Dennis Quaid. He plays the bad guy again as Charlie Peck. Charlie Peck, he needs to um, sell his house. Uh, it's been in his uh, family for generations. His great-great-grandfather. Mm -hmm. I wanted to put one more great. I don't remember. You can do it. I, don't, I won't judge you. All right, great-great-great-grandfather. Probably not true. Either way. <laughs> <laughs> you know this is the real story, right? No, 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 no. He, he uh, helped build this uh, uh, property. It's called Foxglove, mm -hmm. and um, he reluctantly wants, needs to leave. He tells the new owner to just uh, inherit it, or not inherit it, uh, pretty much got a fortune from a great deal the husband um, uh, closed back in the big city, and now they want a million-dollar house out sure. in the country. Um, we have Michael Ely plays Scott Russell, and Megan Good, who plays Ann Russell, they are the couple that buys this house. Well, Dennis Quaid, he wasn't quite honest with this couple. He really wasn't ready to sell this house. He lied about where he was going, and he just kind of sticks around. He does some minor things every once in a while, like, you know, just keeps on coming around and mm -hmm. gives them uh, helpful advice about the house. Sure. And Little secrets and stuff like wiggle that. that. Wiggle the handle on the toilet. Yeah, he's like, you gotta do this. Hey, did you see this? I'm, I'm just gonna mow your lawn. Hey, I'm gonna stop oh, by and nice. hang out with your wife. And no matter how many times you tell me not well, to come creepy. around, I'm gonna keep coming around. And your best friend threw a cigarette in my lawn. I mean, your lawn. And now I'm gonna take that cigarette and burn a hole in his uh, leather seats. And, you know, wow. weird, creepy things. Yeah. It just gets progressively worse and sure. worse. Um, okay, so. There is not much more to this <laughs> plot. Oh, yeah. um, it gets creepier. He's trying to muscle his way in. There is some great, I've considered interesting acting. Mm -hmm. Maybe not great acting, but interesting, like acting, interesting acting by Dennis Quaid. <laughs> yeah. I think he did a really good job at portraying a someone who could either be a very high-strung person who's just trying to be friendly or someone who is not friendly, who is really high strung and mm -hmm. pretending to be a nice guy. I thought that was interesting, but they didn't do much to play with it in this movie. Uh. They pretty much let you know 
no matter how much you want to think maybe Dennis Quaid might not be the bad guy, yeah. they let you know real fast yeah. and hard that he is the bad guy and he's someone that you should always be concerned about. There's a lot of cheap jump scares that uh, aren't ooh. really scary. You don't move at all. You just go, oh, I see what they were trying to do <laughs> ooh, there. That but be scare. Yeah, but I, I wasn't scared. Um, the story flowed. Mm -hmm. It made sense. Okay. Um, there wasn't anything too thrilling, and besides that, I thought Dennis Quaid's acting was interesting, yeah. possibly very good. Yeah, but, well, I, but I'm out on that one. Yeah. Um, there isn't really a good reason to go to this movie. That's what I was it's, afraid of. I gave it a 2.5 mm -hmm. because it is watchable. Yeah. I sat through the whole sure. thing. It was good in that capacity. Yeah. Pretty again, standard stuff though, again, huh? very. Fit. I'm, I've, I'll forget it tomorrow. <laughs> That's a damning phrase. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> uh, I, I watched it today. Tomorrow, oh, I'll no. never think about it again. <laughs> uh, the last movie we have on the marquee <laughs> this week is a film called Long Shot from director Jonathan Levine. Uh, it stars Charlize Theron as Charlotte Field. She is the Secretary of State uh, for a president played by Bob Odenkirk, mm -hmm. who, uh, in uh, a kind of a satire of our times, is played a president on TV and got elected, and he, he just wants to go back to being on TV now. Mm -hmm. um, you also have Seth Rogen. There's a guy named Fred. Um, Fred is uh, a childhood friend of hers. who uh, is, He's a recently fired journalist. Um, she hires him on to write for her, for uh, punch up her speeches, give him a little more humor, because she is going to run for president, and they say that she, uh, her handlers feel she lacks a sense of humor uh, in her speeches. Um, uh, one of her handlers, played by June Diane Raphael, who I always enjoy, she plays the very uptight, uh, snooty uh, handler. Uh, you also have O'Shea Jackson Jr., Ice Cube Jr. in this as Seth Rogen's best friend. I think he is great in this movie. I, I enjoy him a lot. Um, and uh, you also have an unrecognizable, almost, Andy Serkis in this film. Yeah, I did not know <laughs> he was in here until I was doing Parker my Wembley, who is kind of a uh, Rupert Murdoch-esque type of character, and uh -huh. I did not know it was him until I looked at IMDb. I was like, Andy Serkis, that makes sense. I was wondering, I'm like, how do, I don't know who this actor is. I knew it was really wearing, it. yeah, I knew it was wearing a lot of makeup. Yeah, somebody in a mask. Yeah. <laughs> somebody <laughs> with a fake nose on. But uh, but anyways, um, Seth Rogen, you know, this guy, Fred, he's out of place. He's looked down on in this society. She accepts him. Charlotte accepts him. And a romance starts to bud between these two. And there's kind of some unexpected chemistry between them. Yeah. Like, as actors on screen. I bought Seth Rogen and Charlize Theron having chemistry together. And I think that's because Charlie Theron uh, is a great actress. Yes. Um, not the other. <laughs> well, it's interesting. So this director, Jonathan Levine, um, he also directed 50-50, uh, which starred Seth Rogen. Um, the Night Before, which starred Seth Rogen. Um, he also did Snatch, that uh, awful skinny, skinny, uh, what's the name of the movie? Mm -hmm. uh, with Goldie Hawn. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he... I, I think he gets the best out of Seth Rogen okay. as opposed to some others. I think he gets good performances. I think he understands him and how to get believable enough performances out of him. Yeah. And Charlie Theron showing some real comedic acting chops in this movie. I think, um, yeah, th this is the first time in a while I have uh, saw Seth Rogen, and I was like, you know what? I like him as a character. Most of his movies are way over the top. Yep. It feels like he has way too much control, and they go out in left field. Or he's really annoying. Or he's really annoying. And this movie, there's a couple of times where I thought his shtick was dragging on, mm -hmm. uh, much like a lot of his other movies, sure. where he finds something that's funny and just kind of rolls a little bit too long. But it wasn't as bad as, let's say, Sausage Party was. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This it's interesting. This I mean, it's it's a comedy that kind of shows the dark underbelly of Washington politics. You know, mm -hmm. she tries to get her green initiative to pass through, and you see that can't happen. You know, things like that. And um, I think that the the third act beginning, there's a moment where they're in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I think there it kind of gets off the rails for a while at that point, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it adds to a runtime that did not need to be over two hours. Yeah, this movie does not need to be. Two hours and five minutes long. No, <laughs> yeah, that's. I think that was a little excessive. But one of the things that I realized watching this movie, and I've been, I realized it last year when I saw Tully with Charlie Theron and some uh, young adult, is that she. I think her strength is her versatility. I think she is really good. She is. Uh, 
she's able to pull off, you know, she, she comes in, she's, she plays a lot of serious roles, a lot of romantic roles. Next thing you know, she's Furiosa. She's doing action movies. Atomic Blonde, she's doing action movies. Yeah. She's doing comedy. She feels like a real person to me. Hmm. And I like that. I like watching her. She always feels real to me, despite the fact that she struggles a lot. I'll have to agree with you. Um, I like her a lot in this movie. Yeah. Um, Seth Rogen, I like better than usual. And that's huge, right? That is super huge. Yeah. Be like, the big Seth Rogen fan. Yeah. Like, if you're tolerable, that's good. Mm -hmm. That means you're not in the way of the movie. And I thought he was good enough in this. Yeah. Uh, you know, I really didn't think about this movie very much yeah. afterwards. Um, I laughed, uh, which yeah. I was surprised. Um, there were some parts that I thought went on a little too long mm -hmm. and that clicked on to the length of the movie, yeah. which shouldn't have been for a comedy. You could have shaved easy 20 minutes out of this movie. Very easy. Yeah. Um, but I like the chemistry. Yeah. And I like the comedy. I laughed. It was weird. I don't usually laugh at Seth Rogen. I usually sit there and just a stare yeah. and wonder why, why people I think it's because they didn't tickets. give, he wasn't there just as the comedic relief mm -hmm. that everyone got something. June Guy and Raphael got, and her other uh, assistants, uh, they got some comedy in there. O'Shea Jackson got some comedy. Yeah. You know, there was, there was, there was other, everyone shared in it. It wasn't like, okay, we have real actors, and then we'll just drop the comedian in here and let him be the hammer of the jokes. Mm -hmm. They live and die with him. That would have been awful. Yeah. I think they spread it around, and that made it, I liked it. it was, I'd watch this again. Hmm. It's got both the men in it. Come you know, on. No, well, <laughs> <laughs> I think if someone else wanted to watch it, I'll, I wouldn't hesitate. All I right. would, I'd be like, yeah, I'd watch again. So but you come over, I'll watch it, you watch uh, it with me. I, I don't think I'll ever actively try to find this one again. But that's, uh, I have a feeling it might. we might have different scores on this. It might not be as much as you think. Really? What okay. did you end up giving I give it a, Long I, Shot? I give it a three. I was surprised that I liked it. That's the score of I'm surprised that I liked it. Is. Yeah, I gave it three <laughs> and a half. I, I enjoyed it. I, I, I really liked it. And uh, I was just talking on uh, on the radio show here. Uh -huh. uh, it's time for five. We were talking about our favorite actresses. Charlize Theron came in as my number two favorite actress. Really? Yeah. Were you surprised about that? I was. Nice. I started going through <laughs> filmography being like, can she do really anything? I think she's underrated. I think she's really underrated with Ma what she does. Maybe she needs to be a superhero in a Marvel movie. That's next, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Uh, before we get into our movie throwback, Mike, yes, you got a little. You saw a film. You went to a, a film fest a couple of weeks ago. I went to see Hump, and if you don't know about this, this is a film festival. Um, Dan Savage, he uh, wrote some pieces in the Onion. Savage Love, yeah, yeah. Savage Love, uh, funny guy, um, really smart guy. He decided he was going to make a film festival for um, adults that want to make pornography. Mm -hmm. um, or erotic film, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're just short films all done by amateurs. Uh, this is the 14th year of Jeez. doing this. And I have to admit, this was art. It wasn't porn. It wasn't something that you could, you know, you would click on mm -hmm. if you were on the internet. It's not saying I do that, but yeah. other people. Um, but these were artful and they were important. Uh, a lot of these short stories you could feel love or you could feel humor or you could feel someone's joy in something that is uh, completely safe mm -hmm. and normalized even though it's not what other people do it just felt like a great atmosphere and sure. you're in a theater filled with people who are laughing and ooing and uh, they're also being extremely accepting and i have to admit i i don't go to these things very often but I went to this one, and I was extremely happy. And I'm looking nice. forward to next year when they do this again. Mm -hmm. I suggest everybody get their tickets early because this is a thing that sells out quite frequently. It's at the Majestic. But um, it is eye-opening and uh, a, a, a great experience. All right. Can't wait to see your film next year. Yeah. <laughs> they have rules. And this year's uh, rules, you have to, like, throw in a Jenga game oh, and the yeah. Prime Minister of... Canada uh -huh. and jumper cables and the way some of these people put I these like, things like in it, it was crazy fest, I like film fest to do that. a car that breaks down and out comes that and there's Jenga in their back seat you know it's and oh. it happens to be the prime minister drives next to you it's yeah. weird <laughs> but but awesome I like excellent that, that kind of leads into what our movie throwback is yeah. this week uh, we uh, we're looking for a film we got a film that stars Seth Rogen. <laughs> He's making some amateur mm -hmm. adult films because he, they're, they're getting desperate. And, and, and he's dating someone way out of his league. Or he's with someone that's way out of his league. 
Yes, he is. We're talking about Kevin Smith's film, Zack and Miri Make a Porno. Mm -hmm. uh, came out in 2008. Yes. Uh, starred uh, Seth Rogen and Elizabeth Banks as a couple of friends and roommates who are down on their luck, mm -hmm. desperate, because they can't afford their rent, they can't afford heat, power, no, no nothing. No gas, nothing. And they turned to the idea of making and distributing their own sex tape for cash to try and um, make things happen. It also deals with the idea of being accepted by the people that you went to high school with. Yeah. So that's kind of a big issue because they're 10 years out of their high school, and that's that's a big thing at, at that time. Mm -hmm. and what are the people that I used to know or and weren't even friends with? What are they going to think of me? <laughs> I don't <laughs> think I – I think I accidentally stumbled on my 30th. Yeah. Or my, my 30th. 30th. Yeah. Wow, Mike's getting no. up there. Uh, also stars close. Craig Robinson, Justin Long, and Brandon Routh, who was at the time was coming off of Superman Returns. This is quite an interesting turn for him in here. And then some <laughs> Kevin Smith favorites, Jeff Anderson, Jason Mewes. Um, I think I think Seth Rogen, we just talked about how, you know, you take him or leave him. I, uh -huh. I think he and Elizabeth Banks are great at delivering Kevin Smith's dialogue in this movie. Yeah. You know, they're not so witty dialogue. The, the, I mean, there wasn't supposed to be any uh, chemistry for yeah. quite a long time. But once the chemistry was supposed to happen, I kind of felt like it was supposed to happen. Now, the rest of the film... Um, yeah, it's not it's not fantastic yeah. film, but I did enjoy myself enough where I'd be like, ah, you know, I'm glad I finally saw this movie. Oh, spoiler alert. Not really a spoiler. I just told you. I had never seen this movie before. <laughs> <laughs> this was the first time I saw it. I think it's Kevin Smith's best looking film, uh -huh. um, but I think that it kind of takes a step back in its tone as far as where his progression as a filmmaker. We go back to what he used to do of its, its dialogue, its dick jokes, and its Jason Mewes. Yeah. And he had kind of progressed past that point, and then he came back, and then and then ultimately, uh, this is when he started to really come off the rails creatively, mm -hmm. following it up with Cop Out, Red State, and all those awful Canadian films yeah. he was doing. Um, but I remember really not caring about this movie when I saw it, yeah. and actively not liking it. Um, but it's slightly better than I remembered it. I think if they cut out some of the um, sex jokes or the scat jokes mm -hmm. and stuff like that, it could have been a lot better film, I agree. but there was some humor and there was some heart in this, sure. and um, some unbelievable or unbelieving uh, parties that just come out of nowhere. Yeah. No one pays all your bills for a party; <laughs> it just doesn't happen. But you know, besides that kind of stuff, I, I thought it was an enduring movie. I liked it. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. I went in being like, "All right, huh. I'll watch it again, but I'm not going to like it." Yeah, it I suggested it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen the movie, and I'm like, you know what? Enough people Let's reference do it. it. So and there you go, Kevin Smith's Zack and Miri make a porno. Uh, let's take a look ahead at what is coming soon, the weekend of May 17th. Sir, we have three films that uh, will be on the marquee that week. The mm -hmm. first one is A Dog's Journey. Speaking of Dennis Quaid, Dog's Journey. Yeah. Uh, th I believe this is the sequel. To this the is a terrible life. idea. Terrible idea. Dog I'm not looking forward to it. Dying. Just kidding. <laughs> spoiler alert, the trailer tells you the entire thing. Yeah, and if you love watching dogs die for <laughs> two hours, this is the movie for you. Every other normal person shouldn't go watch this. It's, but anyhow, yeah, it's I a agree. sequel, so there we go. You uh, we also <laughs> have a movie I'm looking forward to, John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. Yep, I'm excited. This sounds great. I have a friend of mine who saw it, and he, all he told me was, it's the best John Wick I've seen. I that said, I love that. I yeah. don't know how you can get better than what I've gotten. I thought the second one was better than the first oh, one, and I like the first so one. Good. So, uh, And the last film we have is The Sun is Also a Star. And we'll question that. I'll be darned if I can't remember what this movie is. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it, though, in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, before we leave you, we want to thank our sponsor, though. Big shout-out to The Palace here in Sun Prairie, Marcus Cinemas. Thank you for sponsoring our program. We always appreciate that, being able to see all these great films in the Dream Loungers. And f new for people who like to use the Marcus app, the new old app, app doesn't work. Yeah, Get the new app, download that, because uh, you're going to be sorry if you are trying to download yeah. some sweet movies and your app <laughs> is not working. Right. New app. Good good point. Good <laughs> uh, next week, we're going to be talking about such films as Detective Pikachu, Tolkien, mm -hmm. Palms, The Hustle, and a streaming spotlight of wine country. Wow. But until we meet again, I'm Jameson. I'm Mike Roth. Thanks for watching.